Hello, YouTubers. A lot of things planned for today. We're going to be dehydrating. Um, we're going to be canning. We're going to be baking. And, well, this is going to be a mishmash of many things. But uh, what inspired me is to, when I cleaned out my freezer and saw things that needed to be processed quickly or they were going to get freezer burned. And um, some past the time we had to cook those up for the dog. So we'll show you how we do that too. So we're going to have corned beef, chicken, and kielbasa. That is going to be the main star today. And such a good recipe. So we'll leave you to that. And uh, I hope you enjoy our many moments. Good morning, YouTubers. Victoria and Pepper here. Um, I want to share you share with you a recipe that I developed for making sweet and sour kielbasa in a, in a can. Um, what you're going to need is any kind of jelly. Just got the dollar store one. Three bottles of whatever flavor. It doesn't matter. I've got all kinds. And But we're doing quite a bit of kielbasa. So, but the first thing we're going to do is put our oven on low <clears throat> and squirt our jelly in the pan. Like so. And I'm actually going to pass this over to Steve so he can start squirting. And then we'll talk about something else. Here you go. Oh, hey, great. Nice. Okay, so Thanks for we're nice. going to be adding peppers. I buy peppers when they're cheap. Cut them up and just throw them in the freezer into packages. So this would be one serving for us uh, with steaks or whatever we want to make. Uh, but I'm going to put them in this sauce. So I'm gonna put a lot because it has a ton of flavor. So when he's done, he's gonna add this. We're gonna put it on the stove and we're going to get bring it to a boil, then simmer it for a while because the jelly does not melt in right away. So you're gonna to wanna to let it simmer for a while. So what I found in my, my freezer, you really should go through your freezer. Um, I found packs of half-eaten, um, large packs of kielbasa. So I said, geez, they're gonna go bad because there's so many and I just bought a ton more. So we're going to cut them up into slices and then we're going to put them in our mixture. Um, no, we're not actually. We're going to put the mixture into them in the jars and then we'll can them like meat. Because they are meat. So I'm going to bring you back in just a second when I get this. I'm just bringing you back for a second to show you that the jelly is in little pieces. You need that jelly to melt down. And then you know when in... Um, we have picnics and stuff. It sits in the crock pot for quite a while, so it has time to do all its thing. And you're going to get a really nice sweet and sour flavor, but you got to let the uh, jelly melt. So right now I've got it on high. I'm going to bring it to a boil, and then I'm going to turn it down and just wait for the jelly pieces to be gone. I brought it up to a little simmer. And actually the jelly did quite well. There's not really many pieces in here now. It's gotten a little darker. And this is the color that your is gonna be. And it's actually super delicious. I just made Steve try it. Mm -hmm. um, you can put onions in here too. Uh, my friend Adam gave me this recipe and it's so delicious. Um, I just haven't put the onions in and it still tastes great. So, but now I'm going to Turn it down to off. And then I have some of my kielbasa ready to go. And then I have some in the sink defrosting. So we'll start, I'll get everything ready and we'll start packing. Be right back. All right, I've got small milk, small milk jars because that's all we could find. There is just none to be had anywhere. So I'm gonna put a funnel on it. These are at Wally World, cheap. And I'm gonna start putting my kielbasa in. Now 
Now, you want to pack it as tight as you can, because obviously you get more in there. Push them down. Now we're going to put our sauce in, and this is where you really need this to keep the mess away. Let me get a paper towel, because I'm a messy girl. No. So here we go. Take a nice ladle of it and start dumping it in. You want to go up to an inch headspace. So what this means is basically just cover your meat up. And there is a line right here. You wanna fill it up to there. I'm just gonna go a little lower because this is a messy job and if it overflows, it's gonna make my canner nasty. So I'm gonna pass it over to Steve and he's gonna wipe the jars. And then we'll get our next one done. They have those little canner kits that come with a debubbler, the um, little flappy things, these things, and the funnel on uh, Amazon if you don't want to go out. But they also have Matt Wally World. Sometimes you got to buy them separately. But they're there and they're handy. Now, if you'd like to get a canner, um, they're, they're not cheap. I'm not, not gonna lie. Um, I did find this cute little canner, um, at my aunt's house. She gave it to me. It's adorable. But the thing is, is that when you can, you gotta have something on the bottom so the glass jars don't break, right? So, I mean, I have seen canners put towels on the bottom of their pans to keep the jars from breaking. So I've never tried it myself, but if I try out this little canner, I'm gonna have to do that. All right, so my veggies are a little high. What do I need? A stick. I'm just gonna push things down because we don't want things to be above the jar lid. <coughs> They always say to keep an inch head space, and that's because it will overflow in your canner. So you wanna stay as low as possible. Now this one's a little higher than I'd probably like, but I put a big kibos in there. So, but I think it should still be fine because you're still at that inch head space because they're saying that this is an inch. Ooh. that one huh yep boy all right i'm actually gonna put some at the bottom first why just because because she feels like it. just because The more you can get in the jar, the more people you can feed. So that's what I always say. I like to make the big jars in case the kids come over and they want some. Because this is a picnic at my house here. You know, you can't get this unless it's picnic season, right? But now you can. And it's just as good as coming out of the crock pot. And one of our little favorite meals to put on rice. Oh, that one's a little high. I'm gonna get a spin. We don't have a uh, like a turkey baster. All right, I'm just gonna take a little bit out of here, so it's below the line, because I don't want it overflowing. And of course, if it happens, I'll show you. But. We're going to say, let's not uh, have that yeah, happen. Oh, yeah, right? It's so messy. 
And then not to mention that you don't have a seal because it all went. Okay, so I only have two left right now. I've got to wait for the other ones to unthaw and then I'll cut some more up. So, but all those pieces gave, how many jars did we get? Four, if you count that. Oh no, three. We got three and three, a small jars. little bunch here. That is fine, we got more. I'm uh, trying to get it all done. Um, I'm actually wanting to try one jar without putting any sauce in it and see what, what that does. I think I'll put a tiny bit of water in it and it'll be an experiment because canning is, of course you gotta find, follow guidelines to, to timings and stuff and meat is always 90 minutes in a quart, 75 in a pint. And then the next thing you gotta worry about is your uh, pounds of pressure. So anybody that lives in my area, which is uh, New England, you're gonna do 10 pounds of pressure. But if you're up in the mountains, you're gonna do 15. And if you're at sea level, then you'll probably do five. But a lot of people just do 10 anyways to be safe. So I'll bring you back when I've got... I thought you would bring me back to show you. It's a family affair. <laughs> we all join in. And let me show you this. <laughs> what are you showing them? Hi, oh. puppies. Sitting here waiting for a any, treat. Any Millsaps. Yep. No, I did not say any Millsap. <laughs> no. So we we went down to uh, 99 Meat Outlet and we saw Toys Kibasa for um, was this three dollars a piece. I think so. So <clears throat> you know, cheap kibasa is cheap kibasa, and but if you throw it in this sauce, yum, super yum, good. super good, and a quick meal. And um, you can actually can rice. Um, I would go searching around. I mean, at some point I might do it again, but I found that the best rice is the one you cook yourself on the stove. Very yummy. Yeah, because the rest of it goes mushy. Well, yeah, we're not mushy people. But we did find one recipe that wasn't mushy. <clears throat> but, I mean, you can always use minute rice. Woo -hoo. That'll work. Oof. Hardly rice at all. Yep. Yeah, I know. You get accustomed. It's got no protein value either. Or no, no energy value. Either. No. Like the regular rice. Like but good my rice. My favorite rice is risotto. The balsamic. Bals balsamic. So I don't even know how to say it. Balsamic. No, nope, not sonic. Balsati or something like that. But it comes in oh, a Oh, basmati. Basmati. There you go. Basmati. And uh, it makes such a wonderful risotto. Of course, it takes 25 minutes to make it. But I'll, I'll make it with you guys someday uh, when I feel like having it again. Because we just had it not too long ago. But um, I've got a lot of canning to do today because we've got stuff sitting around that um, you, cause you can't leave stuff in the freezer for long periods of time, six months maybe. And then you start seeing the little frost get on them and that's the time to take them out and can them before they go bad. And uh, so, and we wanna make room in case there's a sale. So we we're, we're, have not been able to find any hamburger, which is weird. But we'll Not keep for looking. Anything reasonable, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, no. So um I've got some chicken to can today and some more beef corned beef and a pork shoulder. So uh, I might bring you back for some of that to, so you can check it out. You need this up here? Nope. So but I'll let you go until I get the rest of these jars filled because now he's given me more kabasi. So I'm just gonna fill my jars up and continue doing this. And I'm hoping that I have enough to make one without, but I have a feeling I made a lot of sauce this time because um, we had probably the equivalent of 10 kabasas, little ones, you know, not the big 
the big, good kibasas. Christmas kibasas, maybe. But, um, <clears throat> thought I'd bring you back. Um, I am going to have enough to do a, an experiment. And so I'm going to give this to Steve. But wait, one thing I want to tell you. What if you run out of sauce and you've almost made it up there, but you're not quite? What could you do? Well, you could take the sauce bottles and put a little water in it and shake it up and put them in there. But maybe you already did that. So if you have to, you can add a little water to bring it up to the little area. As long as your meat is covered. If, you're, if it was lower and your meat was covered... We're all done cutting. It's meat. fine. It doesn't, and you could have half That's a jar. As long as the meat was covered. So, good little key. That's all you're getting. That's it. Meat's so, here delicious. you go, Steve. Thanks, Sandy. So, we got one, two, three, four. We got five jars with out of one jar of jelly and three jars of um, barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce. So, that. <laughs> is how much it makes so if you're planning on making but uh we have a lot of kielbasa so at least probably 10 packs worth Mama, um kielbasa doesn't in? go very far as we all know most of us can eat Stop a kielbasa um half of it anyways by ourselves okay so here we go now kielbasa has fat in it so i'm on the fence about putting a little water in there or not because it does have fat and it. it should cook itself so i think for this experiment we're not going to put water in it we're just going to leave it as is well, have them wipe the jar and then we'll put it in the canner with the rest all right i'll bring you back in a second because you know i can't film. we end up finding the lone uh kibasi here so for this one i'm actually going to put a little bit of water on the bottom of it and uh, I will uh, put that in the center instead and see if, uh, what, if it makes a difference. So because we found the hidden kibasa underneath the corned beef that we're going to be doing after, uh, we decided to take the water and use it as a weight. So, I mean, normally you would not can like this and have it on the side because all the water is probably going to fall out of here. But we'll see what happens because I've never done it. But it's a good weight, right? So let's try. All right, YouTubers, our steam is steady streaming. It's whistling, and we're going to turn it to two. And then we're going to have Alexa time 10 minutes, and it should take about 10 minutes to get this up to two. So I'll bring you back when it's... As promised, I'm bringing you back to show you that we're at 10 pounds of pressure. And we got a nice steam. Eh, it's hard to see, but we got it. So we're going to time 90 minutes, and then I'll bring you back. Alexa, time 90 minutes. There you go. That's all you got to do. Or set a timer on your phone. Don't forget about it. So I ended up finding some mystery meat, which turns out to be stew beef. And it's got a freezer burnt smell to it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cook it up and then I'm going to dehydrate it for the dog so they can have their little chewy treats. Wow. So I'll uh, show you that later. All right. Or you shoot. I wanted to bring you back to show you the difference between small mouth jars and wide mouth. Um, it's absolutely easier to get meat out of this kind of jar, but it will fit in this kind of jar. And since we have more corned beef to um, process, we're going to have to put them in these because there is no one. I'm going to actually go downstairs and look and see if I can find some more. But um, they're running out of jars everywhere. We have the uh, gallon jar. We have the oh, yeah. They have the huge ones. But we're not going to do that much corned beef because it's only me and Steve that eat it. Unless the kids come over. So here's my stewing beef. And I think it's pork in here. And I'm just going to rinse it off and get as much fat as possible off it. And then I'm gonna put it back in the pan and just boil it a little bit longer to get any fat off because this will really do great on the, um, on the counter 
as long as I get an oxygen absorber in it, and as long as I can get all the fat off it. So we will see. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like after I boil. All right, I'm bringing you back. I think that most of the oil is gone. And I'm going to put it onto my rack so I can uh, dehydrate it for the dogs. So all I'm going to do is shake it and then lay it on the silicone that I got from Amazon. Very cheap. And I'm going to put it on. I'll bring you back when I'm all done. All right, so the last one's done. I got three trays and I just kind of spread it out. And um, it's probably going to take a few hours, so I'll bring you back when uh, it's all set. Uh, my temperature is 158, and I've got it on nine hours. I don't think I'll need that, but we'll see. So I've got about seven more minutes before my canner is done. So I'm getting ready for the next batch. So I'm just wiping the edges, making sure I don't have any grease on there. Always wipe your edges or you're not going to be happy with what happens. But you will forget and you might be okay, you might not be okay. I actually have one more meat to can, but I'm going to can these together. And then um, I've got a pork loaf to can, which is fine. And um, I'll bring you back for that. done. So we're going to do like we always do and we're going to pull this off of the burner and let it gradually come down. So when it comes down I'll take it out and we'll check out how our kielbasa came out. All right our kielbasa is done. You know it's done when you can twist the top and that is lovely. I always lift it away from you so you don't get burned by the steam. Our water looks okay. But hopefully it did its job and uh, nothing came out. Let's see if we lost any water. Maybe a little. I wonder if we got clean water or dirty water. Oh, it looks dirty. So let's see what happened here. Okay, so here is our kielbasa with a little bit of water in it. Um, okay, no. Nope. That is our kielbasa with a little bit of water in it. And this is our kielbasa with no water. It made its own juice. But it's still going, but it looks good. So here is our jars with the sauce in it. Somebody leaked. And you'll know when you have sauce that's missing, and I'm still looking for it. I don't really see any, so I'm not really sure. Who leaked? So all the sauce seems to be there. So, oh, look at that one. You see it going down. So maybe it was you. The top is finger tight. So oh boy, look at this one. That one's bad. That one will have to be eaten. You don't definitely want to play with that. So something. No. I'll have to wait till it cools off, but that was bad. Let's see. See what happens when you fill it up too high? You get a bad seal. It wanted to combust. So that is probably was too high 
you know, because I didn't really figure in the juice. So we'll have to see which ones are going to seal because maybe they, none of them will. Who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that these will. But I'll bring you back after and we'll uh, investigate a little more on what happened to these. Probably my fault filling them too high. See what I'm saying? And even though I went to that one inch headspace, we're going to go with, from now on, if we make this, we're going to go down to here instead of up to here where they say to go. Because that seems like it's not cool. And the funny thing is, is that I'm using, using pure jars. And this is the second time that this has happened to me where the top has gotten all distorted. <clears throat> and then I, uh, I was trying to take the lids off because you don't store them with these rings on. And every time I went to undo it, it was so tight on there, it unsealed it. So then I ended up just leaving them on but it's super weird. But looks like if my water just sealed. That's silly. But we'll see. We'll see. These, this kibasa does not look bad at all. I'd eat it. But I gotta cool the pan off, wash it out, and then put the rest in. My chicken and my corned beef. All right, I will talk to you after this cools off and we will see what's going on with that one. I guess. Hi, YouTubers. Um, I'm going to make a baked chicken today and if you've never tried this way, you should try it. So what we're gonna need is some mayonnaise. Hellman's is the best. And I'm just going to put a couple spoonfuls in a jar or a bowl. And then I'm going to squirt some ranch in there. Just a squirt. And then you're going to need some chicken. I've rinsed it. And I'm just gonna pat it dry. Get all the excess off it. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other piece. And the, I'm cooking legs and thighs together. So this will be our dinner for tonight. But if you've never tried this, God, it's so moist. So the other things you're going to need is some panko. Um, this is the, uh, I'm just going to flavored one, throw it on a, on a plate. But I'm also going to grab some 4C seasoned breadcrumbs and put some of that in there too. So I'm going to take you with me <clears throat> because the most important thing when you're cooking meats is to season them. And I'm going to throw some salt and some pepper on there. If I can find my pepper, what did I do with my pepper? Oh, there it is. Look at me having you right in your face. All right. Back down, and I'm just going to salt my meat. And then I'm going to pepper my meat. More flavor on the meat, I think, is better. And then we all know that salt enhances flavor. So to do without it when you're cooking is just wrong. Okay, so I'm mixing up my mixture of mayonnaise 
in ranch dressing. Now you can just do this with mayonnaise too. But here's why I have gloves on. Because now you're going to slather it all over your chicken. I learned this technique years ago and I still use it because it makes such a nice juicy chicken, it's ridiculous. So why wouldn't you use it again? So after I slather, I'm just going to put the breadcrumbs on it. And then I'll lay it in my pan that I'm going to cook in. Now, the reason you want both kinds of breadcrumbs is the panko's got a crunch to it. It's, they're uh, a little thicker. They're kind of like a cracker, sort of. So after I feel confident that I've covered most of it, I'm gonna lay it in the pan. Then I'm gonna get my other one and do the same thing. Just slap it all over there. But like I said, if you've never tried this, You've never tried a good chicken. <clears throat> and now I am so all about the flavor, but since I was a kid, I've always loved the crispy crust. And this definitely gives you a crispy crust. And now I'm just gonna put my breadcrumbs all over the chicken. Again. And I would wear gloves if I were you because it's messy. I have done it without gloves and I feel like I'm constantly washing my hands. So now we don't have to. So now I'm just gonna lay it on the pan. Now I've got a mess. Steve's gonna be mad, but see why? You definitely want gloves. So here's what it looks like. And we're gonna put that in the oven on 350, which I've got my oven already going. So I'm gonna throw it in there. And I'm gonna leave it in there for almost an hour because here's how you know when it's done is it starts, the legs start separating from the skin. So this is what you're looking for. And so anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. So, but I'll bring you back when it's done so you can. All right, how do you know if your chicken's done? Ask it. If you see the bone, the chances it's done and it's tearing away from, the skin is shrinking. But yeah, it's definitely done, and wait till you All right, YouTubers, we're back. Uh, last batch for the day. Uh, this is how the chicken came out. It doesn't look bad. It made lots of its own juice, which is weird to me because it was, because I didn't put any juice in there. Um, you can see it still boiling. Um, and it made a lot of juice. But that is that. We'll have to try it in a recipe and see how it is. But the corned beef came out good. And the kibasa ended up one not sealing because of that bulge. I'm not sure why that's happening. Um, but the rest looked great. And we'll have to wait till we feel like kibasa to open up the jars and see how they taste. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining me and Victorian Prepper out. Ta-ta for now. Checking on dehydrating the meat. This is crumbly. And this is still chewy. Yeah, let's see. Still shiny inside, so we're gonna leave it a little more. Um, 
though it's fine for the dogs, we just threw it in the fridge, but I was trying to make it counter stable, so we'll keep it in there. And I'm still waiting on the meat. It's probably been like four hours, but if you can see the glistening on this, there's fat on that piece of meat. So it's going in the mess down there, the dog food. And a fella. But they're still squishy. I don't know how crunchy I want them. I mean, I kind of wanted them like beef jerky. Though I gotta be honest, I've never really had good luck with beef jerky. But some of these are getting really tough now, which I think the dogs will love. Because they like their little crunchy things. So I'm gonna say for the most part, these are done. These are good for dogs and they're not gonna, it'll probably take less than a week and they'll eat them. So we're done. I'm gonna throw them in a jar, put an oxygen absorber in them and call it a day. Good night, troops.